Hello everyone, and welcome back to Perfect Spiral Capital. My name is Luke Tatum. I'm an authorized infinite banking concept practitioner. Today there's no video. I'm just providing for free the entire first chapter of my Amazon best-selling book, Between the Lies, How to Reclaim Your Future from the Banks and Wall Street. If you're interested in the full book, the audiobook is available on Audible, the print and digital copies are available on Amazon, and there's links in the description box below for all of those. Thank you so much, and I hope you enjoy it. Part 1. Lies and Half-Truths Chapter 1. Perception Section 1. Serenity Where wisdom reigns, there is no conflict between thinking and feeling. Carl Jung I wrote this book to spread peace. Peace between husbands and wives. Peace between parents and children. Peace between neighbors. Peace between business partners. As with all change, this starts inside of you. By the end of this book, you will have learned the reality of our financial system in the United States, how this keeps millions of households trapped in a cycle of struggle, and how you can remove yourself and your family from this system using a time-tested, proven framework, the five-step truth blueprint. Serenity of the mind is rare. Calmly evaluating any situation, no matter how unexpected it is, and then making the most reasonable adjustment to accommodate that new information. That's serenity. You perceive when someone has achieved this mental state within seconds of meeting them. They are at peace and handle life's ups and downs without missing a beat. Everyone knows someone who is ruled by childlike emotion, quick to anger, impulsive, unpredictable. They are almost always struggling financially. Likewise, you probably know someone who is exceedingly logical. It's hard to relate to them and it can seem like part of their humanity has been locked away. They can also be so analytical that making a concrete decision about anything is almost impossible. Logical people do an excellent job of following a chain of reasoning, but what happens when the information they are given is flawed? This can lead to just as many problems as making decisions on an impulse. Serenity, as it will be handled in this book, means bringing your logical and emotional selves into alignment. Both are vitally important, but there is a transcendent you that is more than either of these components on their own. Let's apply these ideas to money. Buying the newest sports car just because you can, in theory, figure out a way to afford the payments on it? Investing in an established subway location, in spite of red flags, because it seems like a great deal at first glance, and you really want to own a subway? Those are almost purely emotional decisions, and that kind of strategy won't do you any favors. Spending three months trying to get the absolute lowest interest rate you can possibly find on a home refinance because those 8 or $9 every month really add up over time? Comparing the market data on two different investment opportunities for so long that you miss out on both of them? Those are overly analytical modes of behavior, and they aren't going to help you either. This book is about money, but it's also about far more than that. Fundamentally, it is about how you interact with the world around you. Many of these interactions have a financial dimension. The truth blueprint is a path to liberation from the lies and half-truths that hold us back. The five steps are take responsibility, reclaim your money, undo your debts, transcend your expenses, and help others. Of those five steps, the first one is the most important 
and the most difficult. Why? Because it's all about you. Taking responsibility is critical for every aspect of your life, not just your financial education. Once you take responsibility, building a foundation becomes much easier. This pattern continues down the list. Once you get to the last step, it will be as straightforward and obvious as brushing your teeth. This book is laid out in a similar way. For someone who has never been exposed to these ideas, the first four chapters may be difficult, but those chapters lay the groundwork for understanding why the truth blueprint is necessary, why it works, and why you have probably been told the exact opposite of my advice for most of your life. A story from my second year in the financial services world illustrates the power of serenity. At this point in my career, when a couple sat down with me for the first time, they often wanted to do something to secure their financial future. At the same time, they would be very budget conscious. The natural impulse to make sure you are getting a good deal typically led to some back and forth on how much they should spend. Here's the story. A potential customer, let's call him Todd, informed me that he flipped houses. Todd got hard money loans at 15% interest, bought and rehabbed properties, and then resold them. At that time, he made twenty dollars to $40,000 in profit every five or six weeks. Todd was approachable, instantly likable, and resonated with the serenity that I described above. I intrigued him by explaining how he could stop using hard money lenders and gain absolute control over his debt by effectively becoming his own bank. He could cut the interest rate he was paying by about two-thirds and earn a dividend while leveraging the money to flip houses. Like many people, Todd did a double-take. What I had just described sounded too good to be true. This was before I started my own company, Perfect Spiral Capital, so my supervisor at the time was there. Todd looked at my supervisor, a personal friend of his, for confirmation. I knew that if he could see how this was possible, he would be on board. Fast forward to our second meeting. We laid out a plan where he would contribute $100,000 per year with immediate access to most of those funds. He asked a few short questions. He nodded his head and internalized the answers. Let's do it, he said. That moment will stick with me forever because the exact same ideas often had husbands and wives with similar incomes to Todd disagreeing for weeks about whether $176 per month or $181 per month was the right budget for their family. Meanwhile, Todd took full responsibility for the financial destiny of his family. He committed to a significantly larger budget after less than two hours of discussion. Why? Because his inner serenity, combined with his financial knowledge and experience, allowed him to evaluate the strategy properly. Todd arrived to our first meeting thinking he was already using the most effective tools to achieve his goals. I showed him something better. He looked into the future saw the advantages, and went for it with confidence. For many households, committing to a slight reduction in today's standard of living to build a plan for the future simply requires new knowledge. Lies are infectious. They multiply like bacteria. Most Americans, through no fault of their own, have been filled up with lies about the financial world by the time they graduate high school. This unfortunately means that they readily produce their own fiction to justify the twisted truth if they ever learn it at all. That's why the first step of the truth blueprint is taking responsibility for your financial education. 
It is no hyperbole to say that the purpose of this audiobook is, in the words of Morpheus in The Matrix, to free your mind. However, it would be arrogant in the extreme to say that this book will contain everything you need to learn. Rather, I seek to present you with the red pill and the blue pill of the financial world and to let you make your own decision after learning the truth. One of these pills will treat the harmful bacteria, and the other assures it will thrive. My own journey toward understanding the financial world began in 2011, when I discovered the largely ignored Austrian school of economics. For years afterward, I watched, read, and listened to everything I could find on economics. As my understanding grew, my perceptions of many other things fundamentally changed as well. I became disenchanted with the mainstream views on just about everything. The question that replayed in my mind over and over was, if I have been lied to about this, what else is a lie? Eventually, I turned my eyes to the world of money. What caused so many people to remain stuck in the rat race? How could we break free? Is there a better way for myself and my clients? A multitude of books claimed to answer these questions. It was one unfortunate get-rich-quick scheme after another. Some of these authors even brushed elbows with the truth, only to completely miss it and draw fundamentally flawed conclusions. I thankfully discovered Becoming Your Own Banker by R. Nelson Nash. This is required reading for anyone brave enough to completely rethink their relationship with money. The book is short, but the rabbit hole that it presents is incredibly deep. Between the Lies is firmly grounded in multiple readings of Becoming Your Own Banker, but by no means replaces it. I wrote this book for those ready to receive a new perspective, the man who believes he has much to learn and the man who believes he has nothing to learn are both correct. Learning is closed to you without a mindset of humility, setting aside pride to consider the many lies you have believed is not easy but it is a prerequisite to a fruitful reading of this book. No matter how many years you have been trading stocks, opening franchises, or buying rental properties, the knowledge contained in the following recording can teach you to produce even greater rates of return for those investments. But let us say that you are not a successful investor. Have you been struggling to make ends meet for years and don't see a way out of the vicious cycle that keeps you financially stuck? The information presented here is also for you. Both the successful investor and the struggling employee can successfully implement this strategy today. How well it works depends entirely on you, the listener. As Nelson Nash said and wrote over and over, it's about how you think. The conventional wisdom that is repeated by virtually everyone is wrong. The following chapters will focus on how and why. Often, this is faulty thinking. But in some cases, it is outright lies spread by people who do not have your best interests at heart. Before learning the solutions to these problems, you must first unlearn the incorrect things you have been instructed to believe. As the great Will Rogers said, quote, The problem in America isn't so much what people don't know. The problem is what people think they know that just ain't so. End quote. All you need is a humble desire to learn more. Broadly speaking, the book is laid out in two parts. Chapters 1 through 3 focus on the way the world is presented to you versus how it actually is. 
Misleading and harmful factors surround us. Seeing through them is critically important. Chapters 4 through 9 present solutions to the problems presented by the first part of the book. By the end, you will have acquired the necessary tools to achieve a sense of serenity in your financial life that you never thought possible. Finally, a word of warning. Listening to this book with no prior knowledge of finance or economics may be something like opening Pandora's box. You may find yourself engrossed in the additional works provided on my website for years to come. This is precisely what happened to me and many of my clients. Regardless of where you are in life today, thank you for listening, and may your search for truth continue for as long as you live. Section 2. The Conventional Wisdom Conventional wisdom is no wisdom at all. Conventional wisdom is taking somebody else's word for the way things are. It's the followers of this world who rely on assumption, not the leaders. Richard Marcinko In order to achieve serenity in our financial lives, we must first understand why doing what everyone else is doing doesn't work. We will examine the way things are, paying special attention to the realms of banking and the stock market. But before we get to that, we must examine our own minds. You can easily find major news publications telling you what to think and how to feel about virtually any topic, from gun ownership to rising prices, from homeschooling to college education, from foreign policy to retirement savings. The experts are always there to provide talking points for others to recite in the break room at work the following day. In the world of money, the advice is clear. It's broadcasted from every branch office of every financial firm from sea to shining sea. If you have ever spoken with a financial advisor, you know the advice before you listen to it here. 1. You are busy working to make money. Focus on that and give up responsibility for your financial future. We are experts, and we will take care of your money for you. Number two, saving money is outdated and can never keep up with inflation. Better to put your money into tax-qualified retirement accounts so you will be able to retire later in life. There are ups and downs, but in the long run, you will be rich. Number three, the modern world moves quickly. You need to maintain an excellent credit score so you can get the best rates on your debt. This will help you get ahead. Number four, investing should be hands-off. Automatic payroll deductions into a well-diversified target date fund will get you where you need to be. Superficially, this advice contains some wisdom. Thinking long-term is a virtue. Savings accounts have paid insultingly low interest rates for years. Many people do make money in the stock market. Credit and FICO scores are important metrics that banks use to determine whether to loan money to you and at what rates. Paying a lower interest rate is better than paying a higher one. You may also see a couple of issues with this list. By the end of this book, you should be able to see that all four statements have serious flaws. Section 3. The Truth Behind the Advertisement In times of change, learners inherit the earth, while the learned find themselves beautifully equipped to deal with a world that no longer exists. Eric Hoffer no money down. 36 months, no interest. Apply for our store credit card and save 10% on your purchase today. Pitches like these are drawn on store windows with liquid chalk, plastered on billboards, recited by retail personnel, and mailed to your home. But of course, these immediate gratification ads are merely preying on a tendency already present in the potential purchaser. Receive the reward now, pay the consequences later. 
for buying things that you need throughout your life, cars, mattresses, furniture, appliances, using credit is just how things are done, almost without exception. This habit of prioritizing the immediate over the future can also apply to every other area of your life. Advertisers obviously have a reason to make the offers that they do. If you finance your purchase, they will make more money by collecting interest over time. We will look at this more closely in the following sections. Thankfully, many people have already learned to see through these advertising ploys, but others take the bait every day. Otherwise, why would companies keep using the same marketing strategies? When it comes to the economic and financial ideas that are repeated by the talking heads at news networks, we need to consider that the same relationship exists here as well. The media portrays things in a particular way for a reason. What about these slogans? Inflation is actually good for you. World War II stopped the Great Depression. The best way to get ahead in life is to have an excellent credit score. What is really going on here? We all like to think of ourselves as rational. We look at the facts and evaluate the best course of action with the information available. However, when we are only given some of the facts, or when the facts are presented with a spin, this can have profound influence on our conclusions. Unfortunately, almost all of us have been given lies and half-truths about the world of money for our entire lives. Not just by the news, but by schools, universities, banks, financial advisors, and even our own families. The worst part, virtually none of these people even know they are propagating demonstrably false views. This is not an attack on your friends and family who just so happen to work at a school or a bank. We can see the results of following the conventional wisdom all around us. Many of us see our parents and grandparents barely surviving on social security. A few fortunate souls may have small payments from a company pension. Medical expenses have been skyrocketing for years. Those who have dutifully funded their tax-qualified retirement plans are still ending up destitute in their later years. Instead, it's helpful to think of this as sort of cultural myopia, more commonly called short-sightedness. Myopia is an extremely common condition in which light focuses in front of the retina in your eye. Because of this, farther away objects appear blurry. The more extreme the myopia, the harder it is for you to see distant objects. The solution is glasses, contacts, or laser eye surgery. If you spend your time reading and listening to people who focus on the importance of your credit score, it becomes very difficult to see any other way to deal with your need for finance. Likewise, if you spend your time watching the news, it becomes nearly impossible to see the myths that are repeated every day for what they are. The solution is to keep listening to this book. Section 4. Our Thoughts Determine Our Reality We behave and act not according to the truth, but the truth as we believe it to be. Lou Tice The importance of how our brains work cannot be overstated. Have you ever tried to argue with someone who strongly believes something that you consider false? Let's pretend that you and a friend are approached by a street magician. He performs a truly incredible trick, a levitating card. You are skeptical. To prove that the playing card is not being suspended by a string, he invites your friend to prove the magic is real. Pass your hand over the card. No string? Okay, 
Now pass your hand under the card. Nothing there either? See? Magic! he exclaims. As the trick ends, however, you see a wire attached to the magician's shirt sleeve holding up the card. The magician's wire was coming from an unusual angle, and of course the magician did not instruct your friend to reach into the area that would dispel the illusion. Wow, real magic, your friend exclaims as you walk away from the performer. Sorry to burst your bubble, but I saw a wire coming out of his shirt sleeve. That floating card wasn't floating at all, you retort, annoyed that your friend has been suckered in by the trick. What? No way. I saw it was real with my own two eyes. The sun is out. You just saw a reflection from a passing bicycle or something. Your friend knows that the street performer's trick was real. You know that it was fake. If you consider yourself a rational person, this is likely to cause you irritation for some time. You may never let your friend live down the fact that she was fooled by a street magician. The performer created the belief in magic in your friend's mind. His genius was that rather than simply saying, check for any strings around the card, he told her exactly how to check. Pass your hand over the card. Pass your hand under the card. Your friend became a believer in street magic because she let the magician set the terms of her investigation. Section 5. Who determines our thoughts? Don't let your mind control you. Control your mind. Jocko Willink As the example of the magician shows, Our thoughts can be manipulated in subtle ways. The bad news is that this happens all the time. The good news is that we can do the same thing to ourselves. There is a collection of nerves concentrated at the base of your brainstem called the Reticular Activating System, or RAS. Your RAS is sort of a filter on all the things that your brain perceives through your five senses. This function is easily demonstrated. Next time you are about to go on a drive, spend some time visualizing a particular make or color of vehicle, such as green trucks or Honda Ridgelines. Tell yourself to look for them. See how many you encounter when you are driving. The results will surprise you. Of course, you can self-sabotage by being far too specific. Thinking about a white 1967 Pontiac Grand Prix doesn't mean that there will be more of this car on the road. What's going on here exactly? First, you must understand that the RAS and other components of your brain are not working for you or against you. Your brain takes the belief that it has been given and then looks for information to confirm that belief. Conflicting information is blocked by your RAS. When your belief and your previous experiences do not match, your brain works to bring things back into alignment. The strongest emotional imprint in the brain wins. In the case of visualizing green trucks, You created a faint imprint in your mind that you would find green trucks while driving. Before that, you probably didn't have any particular expectations about what kinds of vehicles you would see, so this new image engaged your RAS. Your brain was looking for green trucks to help your visualization and reality match. Imagine if you played a game of chess without any instructions. Worse yet, Imagine that someone taught you all the wrong rules. What opportunities for victory would your brain find for you if it believed that pawns could only move five spaces diagonally and queens can only move one space at a time? None. It would have no idea what it was looking for. However, with a correct set of instructions, your brain would have what it needed to strive for victory. 
A good magician is a master of this. He creates an aura of excitement and mystery before performing his tricks so that your brain will see what he wants you to see and ignore anything that might put a crack in the illusion. Let's look at a passage from Atomic Habits by James Clear. Quote, Imagine two people resisting a cigarette. When offered a smoke, the first person says, No thanks. I'm trying to quit. It sounds like a reasonable response, but this person still believes they are a smoker who is trying to be something else. They are hoping their behavior will change while carrying around the same beliefs. The second person declines by saying, No thanks. I'm not a smoker. It's a small difference, but this statement signals a shift in identity. Smoking was part of their former life, not their current one. They no longer identify as someone who smokes. End quote. This perfectly illustrates the principle. The person who says, no thanks, I'm not a smoker, changed their belief, and their brain tries to resolve this against their current reality. This person looked into the future and imagined how it would feel to be a non-smoker. They took their future self into the present and overwrote their old beliefs. The brain sees that words, actions, and emotional imprints match. In a sense, the brain says, Why would you accept a cigarette? You don't smoke. The battle is won. The first person in James Clear's example, however, has simply told himself, I should stop smoking. In his mind, he is a smoker. When a friend says, come on, just one cigarette, his brain will likely give in. Why? His emotional imprint of who he is says, smoker. The first person's reality is determined by his smoker friends. Why? Because he has given up the responsibility of determining reality for himself. Section 6. The Illusion of Choice Thinking is difficult. That's why most people judge. Carl Jung Let's bring the previous sections together. Many of our beliefs, probably far more than we are willing to admit, come directly from external sources. The primary role of news media in modern America is not to simply report the facts, but rather to shape public opinion. The news has assumed the role of our RAS before we even received the information. By becoming a pre-filter on our thoughts, the media can play an insidious role. Consider the example of the income tax. News anchors across the nation discuss what Republicans and Democrats believe should be done with taxes. What tax brackets should be bigger? How many brackets should there be? Who is paying their fair share and who isn't? You received this information as a package deal. Check here to support the R version or check here to support the D version. Here's a lovely sticker for your trouble. Having no income tax at all is not an option in the voting booth. Notice how this issue is completely sidestepped. The media magicians told you exactly which approved questions to ask. Pass your hand over the card. Pass your hand under the card. Now, do you believe in magic? Consider how many personalities on the news used to work in the U.S. intelligence community. John Brennan, James Clapper, Asha Rangappa, James Gagliano, Fran Townsend, Mike Rogers, Samantha Vinograd, Philip Mudd, John Kirby, Lisa Monaco, and many more. What it boils down to, whether you like it or not, 
is that the same tricks that the street magician uses are being used on the entire population every single day. This applies to the news, and it also applies to money. In the next two chapters, we will grab the wire holding up the floating card and expose the illusions. Judge the issue for yourself. Will you take responsibility, or will you sit back and enjoy the magic show?